Uh, I mean, you can't win if you don't play, right? 63. That's right, you can't win if you don't play. Lotto fever continues. The Powerball jackpot reaching a, get this, $1.6 billion. The jackpots have been growing for three months, and as a result of 39 drawings with no winner, the intensity is increasing with every single one. That's right, the next drawing is today. If someone wins, they can choose to get the entire sum of money in gradual payments over 29 years, or a lump sum, lump sum payment of more than $782 million. All right, so Jonathan, I know Mia's here too, hopefully we can pull up her mic. You win $782 million, what are you doing? Jonathan, you start. Goodness, that's an excellent question. <laughs> I will buy myself a house, Okay. buy my parents a house, Nice. Uh, donate some money to some, some really good charities, of course. and then uh, invest another okay. amount. Okay, Mia, what do we got going on? All of those things, uh -huh. fantastic, plus I would travel. Travel, do, nice. Do some serious way. traveling. Yes. Nice. So, what about you, Max? Do you guys, uh, I'm gonna evade the question, do you guys plan on <laughs> playing tonight? Yes, because if you don't okay. play, you don't win. <laughs> if you don't play, you can't win. You miss hundred percent of the shots you don't take. All right, Michael Jordan. So are you playing? I guess I should now. I guess we, we have, have to, to now. That's true. All right, I'll go in for my two bags of ice and my lotto ticket. There you go. <laughs> Come out with seven hundred and fifty million. Time now eight fifty seven. Fifty five degrees out. New this morning, San Antonio police searching for a suspect involved in an overnight shooting at an east side bar. And taking a look live through live cam, the sun is out. It is 9 o'clock in the morning, 55 degrees. It's going to be a beautiful day, San Antonio. Good morning, 9 o'clock this Saturday. Thank you so much for starting your morning with us. We started the 8 o'clock outside. It was crisp. It was clean. It was beautiful. And then... Mia joined us at 8.30 outside. Mia, you got the sunrise and everything. It was so beautiful. I know I was saying that I was so jealous that they got to go outside and hang out for the start of the 8 o'clock hour because the fall-like weather is back. I know it was super muggy over the past couple of mornings. It is a much different story out there early this Saturday. The weather may be great, and we'll talk all about what we're expecting throughout the remainder of the day today and into the second half of the weekend as well. But the pollen count could be better. We just got this in here. Mold are high today and juniper makes its return in the moderate category. So yes, great weather, but if your sinuses are maybe acting up just a little bit or you've got some watery eyes, could definitely be due to the pollens out there as well. But yes, let's get a quick view at those temperatures here across the San Antonio area. Much cooler than where we were this time yesterday in the 50s for the most part here in Bear County. Upper 40s for places like Rio Medina this 9 a.m. hour stretching up into the hill country, 45 in Kerrville, 49 in Comfort, as well as stretching over to Bulverde, 58 officially over at the airport. We saw the beautiful view outside on live cam all of that sunshine in place that is here to stay for this Saturday. So if you have any weekend plans outdoors again, besides the pollen being a little elevated out there, it is going to be beautiful weather wise temperatures climbing into the low 70s by lunchtime. I think upper 70s is where a lot of us are going to top off here this afternoon. So overall, pleasant weather wise in terms of your weekend forecast. Tomorrow's going to start off chilly and it is going to be a little warmer into the afternoon. We're going to start to see some humidity work back in before the day is done tomorrow. So we're going to talk about that as well as what that humidity could mean in terms of maybe some areas of patchy fog early next week in the mornings as well as some additional patches of drizzle and sprinkles. Y'all we will talk all about that and get you a full look at the upcoming week in just a few. Thank you, Mia. New this morning, a man fighting for his life after being shot in the face. This is what we know right now. It all unfolded around 3 this morning near Bonanza and Monterey Street. That's where police tell us the man was shot while being in his vehicle. He then lost control, hit a parked car. He was later taken to the hospital, we're told, with critical injuries. Right now, police don't know why he was shot, and at last check, no arrests have been made. The search is on for the person who shot two people at an Eastside bar. It happened around 1 o'clock this morning on Rigsby Avenue. Officers say one man was shot in the hand following an argument at the Vibe Sports Bar. A bouncer who tried to stop the fight was grazed by a bullet in his leg. They are both expected to be okay. 
And a big update to a deadly overnight crash we've been telling you about through the morning. We have learned that two people are now pronounced dead. This all happened around 1130 last night. This is on the city southeast side. Officers tell us they got a call about a driver swerving, causing other vehicles to go off the road. Then we're told that same driver went off of I-35 onto some train tracks. That is when they crashed into the train. Now the driver and a passenger in the vehicle pronounced dead at the scene. And tonight, the Diwali Festival of Lights is set to happen, and it's a celebration of Indian and Hindi culture. All right, so this year, it's going to have a little Latin flair as well. Thousands of people dancing the night away. So if you do go, you're going to see a lot of marigolds. The color represents good luck for the new year. Organizer Asha John says there's going to be a lot of entertainment, a full river parade, fireworks, and so much more. A new feature this year is a 30 by 30 illumination maze that you could walk through. That's a colored light maze. The event is happening tonight at Hemisphere Park and at the Arneson River Theater from 4.30 p.m. until midnight. And happening today, First Mark Credit Union is hosting its third annual Turkey for Teachers giveaway. The event is to honor local educators for Thanksgiving. It will be at First Mark Corporate Office. That's at 2023 Gold Canyon Road, San Antonio, starting this morning at 9 to noon. This year, they are partnering with uh, the group, including the Lonnie Walker, the Fourth Foundation, and KLRN to give away holiday turkeys. They will be giving out a thousand turkeys to local teachers. The San Antonio Spurs Coyote or Coyote is scheduled to make an appearance. And also happening today, a blood drive. Our community has a three day blood supply. Type O blood is that only a two day supply, so blood donors can help out, step up, and give back this holiday season, providing a toy to a pediatric cancer patient or 25 meals to someone in need. And all of this is through the South Texas Bloods Partnerships. Now, if you donate today, you're going to be treated to a live acoustic musical performance and a visit from the South Texas Blood and Tissue mascot. It's going on from noon to 5 p.m. today, 3650 TPC Parkway. If you have any questions, we have all those answers on KSAT.com. And the San Antonio Zoo is honoring military personnel with free admission this November. The offer applies to active duty retired veteran members of the military, National Guard and Reserves with proper ID. And according to a news release, up to four immediate family members of military personnel can receive 50% off standard admission from November 1st through November 30th. All right, time now, 906, 57 degrees out. And if you're looking for things to do this month, we've got a full and complete list of some of those events coming up. Plus, a look at some of these devastating storms that destroyed a lot of buildings and homes in parts of Texas overnight. We're gonna give you an inside look. And taking a look outside, it's a beautiful day. It is 57 degrees. We've already seen joggers taking advantage of this gorgeous day. We'll learn more on how the weekend's gonna play out coming up after the break. Welcome back. Terrifying images, severe storms ripping through parts of Texas overnight. Reports of at least one tornado touching down. The storms not only damaged buildings, reports say it trapped people in their homes. And here's a look at the latest of those storms from Rob Marciano. Overnight, a severe weather outbreak striking the south central U.S. 18 tornadoes ripping through three states. One person dying in Oklahoma, but Texas getting the worst of it. About an hour east of Dallas, this tornado tearing through the town of Sulphur Springs. Uprooting trees, debris flying everywhere, crushing cars. And this massive funnel touching down near Paris, Texas, injuring several people there. I've got one person missing in a house right now, and I've got multiple victims out here. Completely destroyed. My house on 3200, all those are destroyed. There are people trapped. I'm trying to get to them now. Canine search and rescue crews searching the rubble, looking for anybody that still may be trapped. In nearby Powderly, Texas, sisters Pamela and Caitlin surveying their former home. The storm flipped their home and moved it 50 yards away from its foundation. Yeah, and it's where we grew up, so it's like, it's sad. Like, that was our home, and that was like a forever home, and now it's not. The same weather system causing a disastrous pileup in Denver, Colorado. Caught on camera moments after this driver crashed into a pile of cars on a freeway. This terrifying video shows when two other vehicles lose control and slam into the driver's truck. It was all one big sheet of black ice. You couldn't see it. 
That was ABC's Rob Marciano reporting on the, the terrible weather conditions up north just uh, uh, here in Texas. That's right. And, you know, Mia, you were saying you're actually kind of tracking the storms as well. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. We were always keeping eyes on that system, especially since it was attached to that front that even worked its way into south central Texas last night. Thankfully, in our neck of the woods, the severe weather threat was not nearly as high. But you can see I put this on a radar loop over the past 24 hours as that front was making its way through Texas and really it was those isolated to even scattered supercells, very, very strong thunderstorms that were able to develop ahead of that approaching front. You can see that crossing over the I-20 corridor moving up to the Arklatex region last night. Those were the storms that were able to produce all of that tornadic activity. Now for us here at home, you can see about 12 hours ago, about 9 p.m. last night, we did find some strong storms develop just east of San Antonio. Thankfully, no tornado threat or anything like that associated with those thunderstorms, but we did have a few brief severe thunderstorm warnings in place for counties like Guadalupe County reaching back over to Gonzales County just for the potential to find some strong wind gusts out there. The rain was generally east of San Antonio. Wish we were able to find more of that for San Antonio points farther off to the west, but at least for places like Wilson County, again, Gonzales, Guadalupe, and even down into Carnes County, we were able to pick up on some rain as that front moved in. So unfortunately, it didn't affect everybody. But what is affecting everybody this morning? The cooler and drier air that is filtered into the region in that front's wake. You can see we are quiet across the area. We've got plenty of sunshine. A different story ahead of that boundary. That same system continues to move eastward this Saturday. A lot of rain and thunderstorm activity still associated with the moisture ahead of that front that continues to push through the eastern half of the country, stretching all the way from the Gulf Coast, reaching up to the Great Lakes region there as well. Thankfully, the severe weather th threat and really set up today, not near as bad as what it was yesterday. But let's talk about that drier air in place here. Waking up this morning, so much more comfortable to step out to for any Saturday morning plans compared to the mugginess and stickiness that we found yesterday. This is a look at the change in the dew point temperature, how we measure that low level moisture here at the surface. We're about 40 degrees drier or cooler than where we were this time yesterday. That essentially just means that, yes, it is more comfortable to step out to this morning. And that dry air has allowed temperatures to cool down pretty efficiently here through the overnight and early this morning as well. We are in the 50s across a good portion of South Central Texas, 58 officially this hour over at the airport. Still some 40s, chilly conditions across the hill country, 45 in Kerrville, 58 in Hondo, 60 down in Catula. Throughout the remainder of the day, very pleasant conditions are going to continue. A lot of fun events happening around town and across the area. I know over in Floresville today, there's a fun Fido's Fest. It is a dog friendly event happening all day long. So if you are taking your pets out for any fun walks, today is going to be a great day for that. This is Paisley Drake and pancake. They were getting ready for their morning walk. You can see that we are going to hold on to those pleasant conditions today. Concrete might get a little warm in the peak heating time of the day today. Those temperatures are headed for the upper 70s, but overall it is going to be very pleasant weather and fall like weather to step out to. Those daytime highs will climb into the upper 70s and low 80s across a good portion of the region. We've got a forecast high pointed around 79 here in San Antonio. And then of course, if you are heading out for any evening plans, those temperatures fall into the low 70s by to just after dinner time. And then we see those temperatures fall into the 60s later this evening. Now, speaking of this evening, I know we've been talking about it a lot this morning. Remember before heading to bed to set those clocks back an hour because daylight saving time officially ends at 2 a.m. tomorrow morning. And you can see how that is going to affect our sunrise and sunset times here. Just over the next 24 to 36 hours earlier this morning, the sun rose above the horizon just before the 8 a.m. hour. It is going to set this evening at about 644. Take a look at tomorrow, though. About 6.50 is that sunrise time, and the sun is going to set 
before 6 p.m. So it is going to start getting darker earlier as we head into the remainder of the fall months and of course gearing up for the winter months there as well. All right, as we head into the overnight hours tonight, it is still going to be a chilly start to tomorrow morning. Those temperatures fall into the low 50s here in San Antonio by wake up time tomorrow. So the extra layer will be needed for any early Sunday morning plans. But again, you will not need it by the afternoon. A warming trend takes place tomorrow as well low to mid 80s and then we start to see some more moisture work in early next week. So maybe like yesterday morning, we could find some sprinkles, maybe some patchy fog by Monday morning and then Election Day on Tuesday. So we'll continue to monitor all of that. Thank you so much, Mia. It's going to start getting darker earlier, which is good news for us, Max. Yeah, go, go to, to bed sleep. early, so Oof. we need that that darkness. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, you know, Mia alluded to. We've been talking through it in the morning because it's so exciting. We get an hour more of sleep now. Do we want to talk about it being taken from us earlier? No, not at all. But we get it back, and that's the important that's part. That's right. And quick shout out to the dog names, Pancake. Adorable. That's going to be my next dog's name. Love. It. <laughs> Thank you, Mia. Time now, nine seventeen. Just about 60 degrees out there. And up next, we got you covered. If you're wondering about what events to go to during the month of November, well, we'll tell you what's happening. Now let's take a look at those lotto numbers. We talked about the Powerball earlier, up to $1.6 billion. But how about the pick three? 844 Fireball 5, Daily 4, 0085, Fireball 7. Cash 5, 2, 4, 7, 19, and 20. And Mega Millions, pull out your tickets and see if you have the lucky numbers. They are 2, 20, 47, 55, 59. That big number, 19, and Mega Plier, 2. Are you looking for things to do this month with your family and friends? Well, there is a list of things right now on our website, ksat.com, along with a few reminders of important dates. Some things to do during the month of November include Worst Fest. The annual celebration of German culture in New Braunfels is set to return for its 61st year from November 4th through the 13th. And how about visiting Santa's Ranch? This family-friendly drive through in New Braunfels takes guests through more than a mile of holiday lights. It will open on November 11th through January 1st. You can check out our website to learn more about all the fun things happening right here in San Antonio. And speaking of fun things, the downtown bar getting into the holiday spirit, hosting a pop-up Christmas-themed cocktail bar. So take a look, Esquire Tavern hosting a Miracle on Commerce Street pop-up cocktail bar, and they're serving a bunch of fun and creative drinks, the Christmapolitan. There you go. Uh, so it starts November 21st. Festive cocktails like the Snowball Old Fashioned made with bourbon, Wormwood Bitters, Gingerbread Syrup, and this was a, a newsroom favorite earlier. <laughs> Grandma got run over by a T-Rex, so it's vodka, lime, and spiced pomegranate. Just some of the things featured on the menu according to the website. And if you are really interested, they're already accepting reservations. And one of America's favorite treats gets its own day today. Today is National Donut Day. These not-so-good-for-you snacks are oh-so-good. America eats 10 billion donuts a year. That's about 31 donuts per person. The signature hole in the middle is said to have begun to help the donuts cook more evenly. And another fun fact, there are actually two National Donut Days. The other one is the first Friday in June. Okay, I want to go back to the Esquire Tavern drinks. We were kind of making up our own thoughts of holiday drinks. Rowdy Rudolph. I like <laughs> yeah. the name. we got to figure out what it entails, though. Yeah, Rowdy Rudolph is going to be the case at Newsroom Drink. Yeah, we'll have our own Christmas pop-up. I feel yeah. like it has to be red. It has, has to be red, red. Red nose. Okay. Just something, just something to think about. We're going to brainstorm we'll, we'll here. We'll get it going, yeah. Stay with us through the morning. <laughs> we'll, we'll create some sort of cocktail. Time right now is 923, 59 degrees. And the day is far from over. Is this the one he made in the backyard? We have Texas Eats David Elder coming up. An interior Mexican restaurant serving up some creative and colorful dishes.
And I want to start with these tacos right here in the front because you got three tacos on there, but those are loaded up. What's going on with this dish? All right, these are tacos azulejos. These are ribeye tacos, grilled onions, your guacamole, and it comes for all the fatty lovers, a grilled bone marrow. What's the salsa here? These are habanero salsa. Would you like some? Um, yes, of course. <laughs> You look hesitant. Is it hot? It is a little on the hotter side it's for spicy lovers. We always give it in small portions because of the spice. I just want a little bit. You want a little, yeah. just a little dabble, do you? A little bit. Here we go. Tacos Los Azulejos. That's the bite. Mm. That is incredible. The tacos azulejos are so good. It's that ribeye meat seared off, served medium rare inside of two corn tortillas. And then on top, you have the onions, you have the guacamole, and then on the side, a little bit of habanero salsa. Plus you have the bone marrow that you could scoop some of that off and throw that in there. It is an incredible taco, especially if you love ribeye. Who doesn't love ribeye? Goodness, I think it's time for some tacos azulejos, Max. Right now. David Elder, if you're watching, come on down. Come on through. Time is 927, 59 degrees. Still ahead in the next half hour. Do you plan on frying the turkey for Thanksgiving this year? Well, if you do, we have some tips how you can do it and how you can keep your family safe. And if you've seen more butterflies than usual around San Antonio, you're not alone. We'll tell you why there are so many flying around and how you can identify them. Good morning, welcome back and happy Saturday at 9.30 this morning. It is cool, it is crisp outside. It's the perfect day, so if you have any outdoor plans, today is the day. But don't take my word for it, we'll check in with me on Montgomery to see if that weather is going to hold up. Well, that's exactly right, Jonathan. Absolutely, it is going to be a fantastic day weather-wise for any weekend activities that you may have out and about across the San Antonio area. Taking a look outside with live cam, we do have a few clouds still lingering out there on the horizon, but for most of us, we just have beautiful sunshine in place, kicking off some of those Saturday morning activities. So the drier air has arrived in the wake of the front that we saw move through last night. That allowed temperatures to really cool down overnight and then very early this morning. It is light jacket weather. We've seen those temperatures fall into the 50s here in the San Antonio area. We had some 40s in place across portions of the hill country earlier this morning. Still is 49 in Kerrville here this hour. 58 in Rio Medina, upper 50s for the most part here in Bear County this 9 a.m. hour as well. So really that sunshine is going to be the theme today for any Saturday activities that you may have out and about expect that sunshine to stick with us, helping those temperatures warm. So about the low 70s by 1 p.m. around 73. I think upper 70s for some, even close to 80 degrees possible as we head into this afternoon. Still very pleasant out there and more so fall like as well. It's going to be another chilly start tomorrow, but a warming trend is going to take place. And yes, we have those lower humidity values in place right now, but that is going to change change pretty quickly, more so by tomorrow evening and tomorrow night. We start to see that Gulf moisture work back into San Antonio. That is going to signal some subtle changes into next week. We'll have a full look at that forecast as well as what to expect coming up in just a bit, guys. A lot happening overnight, a terrifying scene as flames filled up a north side home. So take a look. This was a scene around 1230 this morning. This is Floral Ridge, not too far from Jones Mallsberger. Crews out there telling us two people were inside the home when the fire started. They were able to make it out safely. The home destroyed. All right now, still unclear what sparked the fire. Investigators are working, trying to figure it all out. Another building completely destroyed by fire overnight. This one on the city's west side at North San Jacinto and Perez Street. That's where crews say a small building that was converted into three apartments caught fire. No one was hurt, but four people are without a place to stay. They're being helped by the Red Cross. No word what sparked the flames. Now, your home may be where you feel the safest, but when it comes to fire, it's actually the most dangerous. So before you get out the space heater or decide to cook the turkey, 12 on your side's Marilyn Morris shows us what to do and what not to do. These sounds are proven to save lives. Working smoke detectors should be on every floor and in every sleeping space. The room where most home fires start, the kitchen. Cooking remains the leading cause of home fire and injuries, and it can be as easy as walking away from the stove and forgetting. 
Stand by your pan is a simple rule. But if you have a fire in a pan, fire experts say cut off the heat source and put a lid on the pan. If you don't have a lid, grab a cookie sheet and slide it on top, but never put water on a grease fire. For oven fires, keep the oven door closed. Turn it off and wait for the fire to go out. Have a fire extinguisher handy too. Cooler weather outside means more fire risk inside from burning candles, fireplaces with dirty chimneys, and space heaters. The vast majority of home heating deaths last year were the result of portable or stationary space heaters. We recommend looking for a model that turns off automatically if it gets too hot and which has a tip over switch. Place them at least three feet away from furniture or curtains and don't use extension cords or leave them on while you sleep. Outside, fire pits can be risky, especially in drier weather. Be sure to have an extinguisher and garden hose ready. And finally, no fires can get out of control quickly. So have a family escape plan before you need it. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. All right, now to the $1.6 billion dream. The people who run the Powerball say tonight's jackpot is the biggest ever. That's right, and people are scrambling for a chance to win. ABC's Morgan Norwood has more. One of them's got to be it, right? This morning, Powerball pandemonium. In just hours, one of us could become a billionaire. A whopping $1.6 billion jackpot now up for grabs. It's the largest lottery jackpot prize anywhere in the world ever. You can play Powerball in 45 states. Hawaii, Alaska, Alabama, Utah, and Nevada don't participate in the Powerball drawing. But listen, there's no jackpot jealousy here in the Silver State. Hundreds lining up to get their tickets at the Lotto Store in Prim along the California-Nevada border. The line snaking around the building. For many people coming from Las Vegas, this is the closest place to go for Powerball tickets. You know, the drive is relatively short, about 40, 45 minutes, but the wait on the other hand, that's a different story. Like two and a half hours. Two and a half hours? Yes. You feeling lucky today? Oh, absolutely. I feel lucky every day I wake up, <laughs> you know? The cash option for this jackpot is $782.4 million, but after taxes, you'll walk away with roughly $450 million. That's if you beat the odds of nearly one in 300 million. But say no one takes home the top prize tonight after what would then be 40 consecutive drawings. The jackpot will certainly grow. It will grow to at least $1.9 billion for Monday night. So if you're looking to share the wealth, perhaps you're pooling with coworkers or friends, here's what experts want you to know. Go ahead and decide on how you're gonna divide up the winnings and then also get a written contract. I'm Morgan Norwood, ABC News, Las Vegas. Good luck. All right, well, back here in San Antonio, the lotto fever also continues. A lot of people excited about the Powerball as this jackpot continues to grow. And the jackpot has been growing for three months, and the results of 39 drawings with no winner, the intensity increasing with each one, especially today being the next drawing. I need two bags of ice and a Powerball. <laughs> I mean, you can't win if you don't play, right? 63, 68. Who's the winner? Nope. Lucky number. If someone wins, they can choose to get the entire sum of money in gradual payments over 29 years or a lump sum payment of more than $782 million. So uh, Morgan Norwood broke it down saying you only get 450 million after taxes, but you know what? I'd still be okay with that. I'll take the just only. Yeah, the only. Sure. It's right. more than enough. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Time now, 938, 59 degrees out. And another look at last night's big game coverage. This time, the O'Connor Panthers and the Marshall Rams. And up next, we talk to experts about how to identify butterflies flying around your yard and your house. Taking a look out live through live cam. It's a beautiful morning, San Antonio. Get out there, ride your bike, get on your skateboard, walk your dog. It's gonna be fantastic. Welcome back. Listen, you may be noticing a lot of butterflies fluttering around San Antonio or in your yard. All right, but not every orange butterfly is a monarch. 
there are actually several types of native butterflies that are the same color. And what are those giant yellow ones? Good question. Our Sarah Costa talked with the director of the National Butterfly Center about how to identify the butterflies you are seeing in our area. It's peak butterfly season. Late October, early November is the best time in San Antonio to butterfly watch. Not only are the endangered migrating monarchs making their way to Mexico for the winter, we are also experiencing cooler temps and fall blooms on our native plants, which is why we are seeing several other types of residential butterflies feasting before the winter months. And most importantly, learning about our butterflies and the importance of our pollinators is a great activity to do with the family. So what kind of butterflies are we seeing? Not every orange butterfly, large or small, is a monarch or going to become a monarch. Mariana Wright is the executive director of the National Butterfly Center in the Rio Grande Valley. She says the most common mistake that people make is thinking every orange butterfly is a monarch. What you are probably seeing are queen butterflies. Like here in my garden, this month I have about 50 to 100 residential queens every day feasting on my Greg's mist flower. At first glance, they look like monarchs, but they are smaller and a darker orange. Think UT burnt orange, and they have different markings on their wings. Monarchs are larger and a more vibrant orange. Think jack-o'-lantern orange, and they have distinct stained glass-like lines on the top and bottom of their wings. Another orange butterfly you might be seeing are Gulf fritillaries. They are bright orange with a black chain-like band on their wings, and they have brown coloring with beautiful silver elongated spots on the underside of their wings. And then you may be awed by the show-stopping swallowtails. Giant swallowtails are seen in Texas, but there are many species. There are eastern and western giant swallowtails. There are other uh, swallowtails that are yellow and black, like the broad-banded swallowtail. Riot says the best way to identify the butterflies you are seeing is by snapping a photo. Butterflies is with their cell phone or digital camera, take pictures of them and then get a field guide or begin to use an app called iNaturalist. And those are pretty reliable in helping you identify and learn your butterflies as well as the families they fall into. All right, so we saw the butterflies there. We were both outside this morning, so was Mia. And Mia, you actually did a special trip over to Wurzfest. Yes, we went out there yesterday to do our little weather on the road segment, and it was so cool. They were getting ready to kick everything off, finishing up all of the nice decorations. They already had some of the performers nice. and artists that were practicing, and all of the food booths were getting ready. Nice. So it was really cool. We went before they actually opened, so not, you know, they're weren't really a whole lot of people there, but I imagine that over in New Braunfels this weekend <laughs> and next week, it is going to be a party because when is worst fest? Never a party, right? All right, well, yeah, so that was yesterday before we had that front move through. So we were able to make it out there before we started to see uh, just a couple showers and storms, at least in our area, mainly east of San Antonio, move through south central Texas. Take a look at this photo sent in via KSAT Connect from CMC Cohen. This is a picture of a big thunderstorm cloud. We call it a cumulonimbus cloud and a lot of lightning associated with that as well. Again, I wish we were able to find more rain for the central and western portions of our area. Really, it was after that front crossed over I-35 where we started to see some more rain and thunderstorm development on the very southern edge of that front as it moved through. You can see still widespread rain and thunderstorms ahead of that boundary moving through portions of the deep south here this Saturday morning. That moving into places like New Orleans affecting Jackson, Mississippi right now. That activity looks like it is just now moving out of Memphis, Tennessee. On the back side of that, we are quiet here at home and in San Antonio. That is going to be the theme and the trend that we continue to find into the afternoon. A little area of high pressure has really established itself over the Lone Star State, and that is why we have scenes like this. Taking a look outside with live cam, we have a few clouds out there on the horizon still left over. I do think we 
we'll see that clear on out of here throughout the remainder of the day, but really plenty of sunshine is in store thanks to that drier air that is moved in via that northwesterly breeze. After we did see that front move through last night, it got a little breezy here in San Antonio. We saw some wind gusts and really upwards of 30 miles per hour. The good news is that wind has significantly calmed down today. Light and variable is what we are expecting this Saturday, but that wind is what allowed that drier air to move in and also allowed our temperatures to really cool down. As of right now, we are about 15 to even 20 degrees cooler in spots than where we were this time yesterday when we still had all of the humidity in place. So it is still chilly out there across portions of South Texas. 58 this hour over at the airport here in San Antonio. 61 in Carrizo Springs reaching back over to Uvalde. 52 in Kerrville. It's 54 in New Braunfels where they are getting ready for Worst Fest today. Zooming this in. 59 in Holotus. 58 over at Port SA. 57 in Bandera. 59 up in the Bernie stage area. So very pleasant conditions for any weekend plans that you may have out and about today. The humidity is going to increase a little bit before the day is done tomorrow. We'll start to see some of that moisture work its way back into our area, which means not only is it going to be more humid as we get ready to kick off next week, but it's also going to be a bit warmer and you'll really start to notice that in the morning hours as well. But before we can get there, enjoy the lower humidity values in place today. Again, plenty of sunshine temperatures warming pretty efficiently because of that drier air 71 by lunchtime upper 70s around 79 is that forecast high here in San Antonio this afternoon evening plans pleasant low 70s transitioning to the upper 60s again I think upper 70s low 80s is where most of us will top off here this afternoon it will be another chilly start tomorrow before we fully see that humidity work back in and then temperatures climb a little bit warmer again into the low to mid 80s by tomorrow afternoon we we see those southeasterly winds start to pump in more of that Gulf moisture. That's that darker green color that moves in, especially by Monday morning. So very similar to what we found yesterday and Thursday mornings with that humidity making its way back into the area. I think some areas of patchy fog will be possible by Monday morning and then into Election Day on Tuesday morning. We may need to monitor for some pockets of drizzle and sprinkles there as well, guys. And then after that, we still are on the warmer side into the second half of next week, but we've got a next front coming through Friday that could potentially spark up another isolated chance for rain. So we'll keep eyes on that as well. Ooh. Definitely. Hopefully we get some rain, so we'll keep an eye out for that. And don't let those sprinkles on Tuesday keep you from heading out to the polls election day. So make sure you get out and do that. Absolutely. Time now, 950, 62 degrees out. And San Antonio, if you're planning to head out on this gorgeous morning, make sure you do it now. It looks like smooth sailing here, taking a look around San Antonio's roadways. And take a look at those lotto numbers. Pick three, eight, four, four, fireball five. Your daily four, zero, zero, eight, five, fireball seven. Cash five, those numbers are two, four, seven, 19, and 20. Mega Millions, two, 20, 47, 55, 59, 19, and Mega Plier two. Good luck, we'll be right back. Good morning, welcome back. And hey, how about those Friday night lights? High school football teams beginning to look ahead to the postseason. We're going to start off with Bernie Champion, head coach Keith Kaiser, who announced his retirement early this week, coaching the Chargers against MacArthur last night, final game of the season. And look at that champion with the ball on the MAC 30 yard line, airing it out. Jordan Ballin, balling out, dropping a perfect spiral to wide open Evan Bates. First half to the game, 7 0 champion, and they go on to win 56 to 31. Next up, Roosevelt Rough Riders and Marshall Rams shaking hands before their last game of the season at Ferris Stadium. Rough Riders on the run in the first quarter of the handoff. Dante Shaw, and there he is, a ton of run, slipping off one of the defenders, tackle, and gets chased down around the seven-yard line. Not before picking up 57 yards, but don't worry, he caps off the drive right here, cutting up the middle, and that is six points. 7-0 Roosevelt, the final from Ferris. Roosevelt, 35, Marshall, 20. Here we go, the O'Connor Panthers, ROTC, running on the sidelines with the O'Connor flags. The Panthers scoring a touchdown against Holmes. O'Connor up 14-3 in the second, adding to that. There we go, Aiden Lara dropping back. Beautiful, Daniel and Denny making a nice over-the-shoulder catch. 29 yards, that is a score. 21-3 O'Connor, the final from Gustafson. 
28 to 10 O'Connor. So look at that, a great night of college or high school football. And of course, we have all the college games today starting off at 11 a.m. So nothing like this. And we just run all the highlights. If you missed any of uh, any of the highlights, you missed your favorite team, just head to KSAT.com. That's right. Time and temp, 955, 63 degrees. Early voting is over, but Election Day is on the horizon. Set for Tuesday, a lot of questions when it comes to what is on the ballot and why? So that is why tomorrow on Leading USA at 8 a.m., Professor John Taylor, the political science department head at UTSA, he is joining us live. We're going to be discussing some of the key races, signs from early voting numbers, and what we're learning from the polls. If you have any questions you'd like to ask, you can submit them right now. Head to the Leading USA section of KSAT.com. Join us tomorrow morning, 8 a.m., for the full conversation. All right, let's get you one final look at those current conditions outside and then what we are expecting throughout the rest of the day today. We've got the sunshine outside here in San Antonio. You can see that's helping our temperatures warm. So just ahead of the 10 a.m. hour, we're now at 64 over at the airport, 61 Rio Medina, 60 in Holotus, 53 in Comfort, now 55, also 55 over in Kerrville. So still a little chilly out there, but we will continue to see those temperatures climb thanks to all of the sunshine and of course, that comfortable air mass that is now in place. Upper 70s near about 80 in spots into this afternoon. Definitely get outside and enjoy it. Weekend plans fantastic. Tomorrow just a little bit warmer and then we'll monitor for maybe some sprinkles and fog Monday and Tuesday mornings. Also, don't forget those clocks fall back tonight. Yes. We get an extra hour of sleep tonight. Extra hour of sleep. Sun goes down earlier. Yes. And worst fest started yesterday. What more could you ask for? What more could Some you rain, ask for? Some rain, but yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's the right. perfect weather. Mia, thank you so much for joining us. Jonathan, always, always a pleasure. pleasure. Always a pleasure. That jinx. Texas Heat starts right now. Hey, it's David Elder, and today on Texas Eats, we're traveling all across the Lone Star State looking for great restaurants you won't want to miss. Get ready for mesquite smoked brisket and sticky ribs at a Korean-inspired Hill Country barbecue joint. Give me some love, bro. <laughs> That's incredible. Thank you. Plus, we're whipping up Shiner Beer onion ribeye sliders in the Texas Eats outdoor kitchen. The cheese is melted. The steak is already cooked to perfection. The onions are beautiful. And we're checking out some of the most creative and colorful Mexican dishes in the Alamo City. What do you tell customers when they walk in? Once you cross the door, you're in Mexico already. <laughs> All that and more right now on Texas Eats. First stop on our foodie adventures at a modern Filipino restaurant on the far west side of San Antonio. Let's go inside Sorry Sorry Supper Club. <music> Joining me now is co-owner Camille de los Reyes. Thank you so much for having us out here. Thank you, David. Thanks for having us. And right in front of us, we have all the hits off the menu from your brunch to your dinner, even the side items, some sandwiches that you can get for lunch. But what is a supper club? Why, uh, why is supper club? Uh, well, supper club we chose because I feel like Filipino food really has a story to tell. We want you guys to come in and really have an experience. We're trying to push awareness on what we're doing as Filipino Americans. We identify with both cultures, but this gives us a platform to really experiment and to push food that we really love. The last Sunday of every month, that's when we do our supper club dinners. That's when they're ticketed and prefixed. The chef comes in and does something really special, creating some Something new all the time. This pork dish, what's going on with this one? It's our Filipino lechon that's been roasted in the oven for four hours. They've coated the inside with lemongrass and fresh herbs that have really made it super aromatic. We have a traditional dipping sauce to accompany some pickled papaya as well. Sauce on the outside, here we go. It is so good, it is phenomenal. The porchetta that they're making in house is a traditional dish that they're putting their own spin on. I love all the herbs, the way that it's put in between all the little crevices in there. And it's all that flavor just build on the inside. Super crunchy skin on the outside. That pork skin is just rocking. It is tender, it's crunchy. The sauce on the side has a really good flavor to it as well. It really balances everything out and creates the ultimate bite. And I wanna move over here to your brunch item 
ube French toast. Um, this is a brioche loaf that our chef created. The ube is swirled all in between, and that's a sweet purple yam, which is really popular in the Philippines, and we've got a dollop of that ube cream on top. Swimming in syrup and powdered sugar. Ube French toast, you can only find it here. Cheers, that's the vibe. That is so good. It makes me uh, feel like the Pillsbury Doughboy. I'm like, woohoo! French toast is already a great dish. You add ube to that, it's next level. And that's exactly what they're doing out here. You have the dollop of ube on the top. You have the swirl of ube in the middle of the French toast. The little custard-like batter that they're dunking in there and using on the French toast with the brioche bread creates a nice layer on the outside so it has a good crunchiness and it's sitting in a bed of syrup. I mean, this is a great dish and definitely something you gotta try when you come out for brunch. So what's the name of this dish and what's going on? This is our red snapper escabeche. Escabeche is a tomato-based sauce um, that we've put a lot of our different vegetable medley on top. We've deep fried it um, so that it's a flying fish kind of presentation. That presentation is really pretty. Cheers. Cheers. This is phenomenal. It is so tender. Mm. The red snapper escovice is delicious. It has so much flavor on the bottom and that sauce on there, it's bright, has a little bit of citrus flavor in there as well, but the fish is seasoned on the outside to perfection. Has a nice coating on there so it's crunchy. The fish on the inside is super tender and that presentation is over the top. That thing's coming right at you. You can break off a little piece, you dip it in that sauce, that is so good. You got a home run everywhere. You have side items as well. You have desserts. You also have lumpia and you have breaded chicken wings. Honestly, there's like something here for everyone. Thank you so much. And of course, you couldn't do this without the help of everybody here, the staff and the support from your family. So who's here with you doing all this? Definitely. So I have my husband with me, Adrian De Los Reyes, our great and fabulous team under Chef Abella Gilbert, who's our general manager and our team in the kitchen, who's just rocking out phenomenally. A definite must try in San Antonio. Here we go. I'm gonna dip it I'm gonna in. Go this <laughs> side in. Eat <laughs> side in. Oh my gosh. <laughs> What am I doing? I feel like I wasn't doing it right. All right, cheers. Cheers. <laughs> mm. I'm gonna eat all that for me. <laughs> I believe you. Yeah. Mm. Now, we're headed to Houston for some spicy, juicy hot chicken sandwiches. Let's go inside Nico's Hot Chicken. Joining us now is owner Nico Frudwin, and we are so excited to be out here because the food looks phenomenal. You can smell it from miles away. It is just like the essence, the seasonings, and you also have some wild stuff on the menu. How yes. did this all get started? It started with an Instagram post back in 2019. I saw a post about hot chicken. I never heard of it before, and so I grabbed my husband. We actually traveled to Nashville, Tennessee, where hot chicken originated, and we tried all the originals to see it for ourselves. And what did you think? We thought it was awesome. <laughs> Princess hot chicken, that's the original hot chicken. Right. We was like, wow, Houston doesn't have this, why not? You created these, these items. I mean, you got loaded fries, you have tenders, you have the sandwiches that you can go pretty crazy with on mm -hmm. the spice level. Mm -hmm. But the one that really caught our attention, ice cream chicken sandwich. Yeah. Why ice cream on a chicken sandwich? Uh, we saw it somewhere and we was like, why not? Because we got <laughs> ice cream on the menu, we got chicken on the menu, let's put it together and see how it turns out. It's incredible, I mean, just the visual of this thing, it comes with two scoops of vanilla ice cream. They're chicken that you can get seasoned any way you want, the toasted bread, and this thing is just ready to rock. Look how, look how perfect this is. If it's not messy, what are you doing eating? Exactly. I, it's like you need to have a messy sandwich. I agree. All right, cheers to you. Cheers. The ice cream chicken sandwich out here at Nico's. We're going right. in for the bite. Here we go. Here we go. Oh my god. Mm. <laughs> that is messy. We're good. Oh my goodness. The ice cream hot chicken sandwich is delicious because it has that little bit of sweetness from the ice cream, that vanilla flavor as well. And you're getting that crunchy chicken, the seasoning on there, the hot oil, you're getting that toasted bread on there. You're eating it all together and it just works. It's the sweet and savory combination coming together with that crunchy texture. Ice cream and the chicken just work so well together. Surprisingly, right? Right. All right, hold on. All right, we'll pause right there. Let me clean myself up. <laughs> <laughs> If you want to go more traditional, you got that on the menu too. And you have two of them right here in front of us as an example. Yeah. And these two, I mean, 
These come with slaw on there, pickles on the bottom, the sauce, and then the sandwich. This is the actual chicken yes. right there. Uh, now, how hot can your hot go? Esther Hot has the <laughs> hottest pepper in the world, Carolina Reaper. So, oh my yeah. gosh. But today we're doing medium. Oh, what's Miko sauce? That's our comeback sauce. So it's mayo based with yeah. a little pepper, but not hot, yeah. and all that good stuff. Sounds like you got a lot of secrets though. You're like, I'm not gonna give away too much. Can't give away too much. Here's to you. Cheers. There we go, that's the bite. Oh my goodness. Give us a look. <laughs> Woo. Thank you. That's just the perfect bite. Incredible flavors. The textures work so well. A little bit of bite and crunch through the slaw as well, but it does help balance the heat. As you can see, it does have some heat though. But just the right amount for that lemonade to bounce through. Mm. And that lemonade's rocking, y'all. You gotta get the lemonade <laughs> when you come out here. It's like perfectly tart and sweet at the same time. It's a great flavor. People love it. And the crunch, though, on the chicken, it stands out. Even it's held, it's holding up against the pickles, the sauce, mm. the slaw. I mean, you have done something really special here, especially with the toasted bread on there. Mm -hmm. I, this is, it's just a great flavor combination. You can't go wrong. I dare you to try the hottest one and let us know what you think. <laughs> this right here is the extra hot chicken out here at Miko's Hot Chicken. And it has the hottest pepper in the world, the Carolina Reaper thing. They gave me a glove because they didn't want me to have it on my fingers. This looks like some evil. <laughs> you could <can> just, <laughs> just smell it and it's crazy, but here we go. I'm gonna, I'm gonna kind of be a baby. I'm gonna dunk it in the ranch a little bit so it's gonna go down a little bit smoother. That's the bite. Oh. I shouldn't have done it, but I did it. I need milk. Oh, there you go, thank you so much. You gotta get milk. You're gonna do it. Have a glass of milk ready. Unless you're crazy, go for it. I drank a little bit of the ranch, it didn't help. You gotta go for the milk. You have tender baskets, fries, and then loaded fries on the side. What are they loaded up with? We have the waffle fries at the bottom with melted cheese, and then we put our chicken bits on top with a little sprinkle of chives and our Miko sauce. This is a really nice amount, too. It's yes. very shareable, yeah. but if you're feeling extra hungry, you can eat the whole thing. Yes, for sure. All right, I want to get make sure we get some of that cheesy goodness. Cheers. Cheers. The loaded fries. <laughs> wow. The chicken out here at Miko's is really, really good. The way they're brining it, all that flavor that goes down into the chicken, and it's so tender, but on the outside, super crunchy, and you can get all the different seasonings out here, so you can go from mild all the way to extra hot. You can get the tenders, and you can get loaded fries. Any way you do it, it's gonna be delicious. Miko Hot Chicken Day. Yeah. What is that about? That's the city of Houston officially designated March 30th as Miko's Hot Chicken Day. <laughs> <laughs> now. Why? What did you did you do something? Did you save a dog from a like a burning house well, or something? Well, we always like, what is... do different things. Like you know, we host a blood drive every month. We help shape community center, giving kids uh, laptops, that kind of thing. So they see us as a, a staple in Houston, Miko's Hot Chicken. So you you do a lot with the community then. Mm -hmm. That's so great. You guys, Miko's Hot Chicken here in Houston. You have to come here and give it a try. I mean, it is so good. Everything here has so many flavors, so much depth to it. Plus, they have their own holiday. You know, they're doing something right. They're helping. The <laughs> community and all the employees are super happy you got to be a part of it we're dunking it here and cheers. that comeback sauce the tenders cheers thank you so much for having You're us welcome. later on texas eats we're digging into some street tacos birria and tortas from one of houston's best taco shops i love that you're excited about your own food that's good, that's good. get hyped about it <laughs> and next on the show we're whipping up shiner beer onion ribeye sliders in the texas eats outdoor kitchen the cheese is melted the steak is already cooked to perfection the onions are beautiful so don't go anywhere texas eats will be right back